this video, we're going to implement the bubble sort algorithm. To review once again, bubble sort on a high level iterates through every item in an array and it just goes by pair and then compares them and returns at the end of it a finished sorted array. Uh, like we talked about in the last video, uh, its performance is very bad because you could technically have an array that is, uh, you have to go through hundreds, thousands, or even millions of times. So the performance is bad, but it's a great algorithm to, uh, to learn how to start to build sorting algorithms. So here in a file, I'm called bubblesort.rb. I'm going to create the uh, algorithm and put it in a method. So let's change the tab size here. Okay, so I'm gonna say uh, def bubble underscore sort, and the argument I'm, is gonna be an array. So we're gonna pass an array to it. Okay, now first thing I'm gonna set, and uh, it's in computer science, uh, an array is commonly referred to as n. You don't have to call your variable that, you could call it anything you want, but I'm just gonna follow standard convention in the computer science world. So n equals array.length. So we're seeing that n is the total number of values in our array. So I'm gonna now create a loop and so I'm gonna create a loop, and it's going to iterate through uh, the entire array and uh, check the values of each element and compare them. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit, uh, let me do a comment right here. So it's starting with an array, so this array could be anything like this. And so it's going to go one to four, one is less than four, so it's not gonna do anything here. Then it's gonna go four to one, four is greater than one, so it's gonna swap out this. So the next iteration here would look like this. And then in the next one, it's gonna look at four and three, and it'll swap this out. And in the next iteration, four and four are equal, so it's not gonna do anything. Next one, it's going to go four and one, and it's gonna swap this out. Then it's gonna go four and three, and so it's gonna swap that out, and then four and three again. So it's gonna go three and four, and it's gonna keep on going down until all of them are lined up. So uh, that's, uh, anytime I have something really complex or that I'm trying to learn, uh, trying to draw it out on what happens on each iteration for me is a, a nice way of being able to walk through it and it gets a little bit less intense. So let's create a variable called swapped and it's gonna be a Boolean, I'm gonna set it to false. So this is gonna check and see if an item is false and this is what we're looking for uh, for what is going to break us out of the loop. So it's gonna keep on going uh, fault, it's going to be swapped is going to be equal to false until the very end. So let's go here and I'm going to say n minus one. So this is going to be a total numbers of the array minus one. And the reason for that is because you want to get one less than the total array and it's going to iterate through it. So we're going to say n minus one time. So it's going to go through it that many times. So if we have a uh, this array right here where we have eight elements then it's going to be seven and it's going to iterate through it seven times so I'm going to say uh, that and then put a code block here and in for our iterator variable I'm going to say our iterator variable is I and now we're going to have a pretty simple conditional here so if I'm, I'm going to say if that element in the array, so if you remember when you access elements in the array, uh, you give it an index. So in this case, the value of i is the index. If that element is greater than the next element, so you could probably figure out how to do that. It's gonna be i plus one. So to go back to our example right here at the very top, in the first time it goes through it, one is gonna be what i is set to. 
4 is going to be what i plus 1 is set to. So it's going to look at those, and it's going, it, it, it's only going to do what happens here if the element on the left is greater than the one on the right. So I'm going to say array i, so that first element or that element in the array, and then array i plus 1, and it's going to swap these out. So we're just going to go array i plus 1, comma, array, there. This is a simple way of swapping things out in Ruby. Uh, if you've come from other languages like Java or some of those, it can be a little bit more complex on switching array elements out. Uh, Ruby does this really well and very efficiently. You can just swap them out by setting the variables equal to uh, the opposite one. And then in that case, we're going to say right here, swapped is true. And then we're going to end that one. And then we're going to end the block. And then we'll say uh, break if not swapped. Just some great uh, syntactic sugar that, uh, that Ruby gives us. Uh, break is going to break us out of the loop. And it's only going to do that if, uh, if swapped is not set to true. And then we want to return the array. So let's see if this works. I'm going to create an array. And we can just actually take this one we have over here. And now I want to do a dot uh, bubble sort. And oh, actually, sorry, I have to do bubble sort and then pass a because a is the argument. We're not calling it on the uh, on the value itself. OK, so let's uh, print this out. Come back to terminal and say uh, Ruby bubble sort. And there you go. Look, it's all sorted. So that worked perfectly. You can see that bubble sort, there's a reason why the performance is so bad. We took a pretty complex concept of sorting and in just a few lines of code implemented the entire functionality. So, but this will, even though this may not be great code to use in production applications, this is a great way of thinking on how to build algorithms. You can see right here, in one line of code, you can switch elements in an array, which is something that's pretty common to do in algorithms. And you also are using uh, Boolean values and loops and things like that. So uh, great job if you went through that. You now know how to implement the bubble sort sorting algorithm. And in the next video, we're going to go on to one of the more complex algorithms, which is how to implement quicksort.